very warm welcome to all our guests joining from all around the world for another exciting seminar i dr vinod kumar from symbiosis institute of business management pune and dr anabel gettitis from university of london feel honored and privileged to moderate fourth seminar and third edition of the seminar series on the digital future for business and society emerging perspective on the metaverse so this seminar series is hosted jointly by professor yogesh kumar devedi who is professor of digital marketing and innovations and founding director of the digital future for sustainable business and society research group at school of management swansea university wales uk next we have dr lori hughes he is senior lecturer within strategic operation group and founding member of the digital future for sustainable business and society research group at school of management swansea university wales uk and we also have professor ramakrishnan raman he is currently director symbiosis institute of business management pune dean faculty of management symbiosis international dean university director strategy and development symbiosis group our entire seminar series is jointly supported by digital marketing and analytics sig academy of marketing green nobel iae graduate school of management a green nobel inp school of the university of green nobel helps the e business and e government sig british academy of management the uk academy for information system also abbreviated as uk ais it tells you something very briefly about the seminar series emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence blockchain internet of things and the metaverse undoubtedly offer transformative potential for the augmentation and potential replacement of human performed tasks and activities within a wide range of industrial intellectual and social applications the impact and widespread adoption of these technologies is likely to be transformational within sectors ranging from agriculture finance healthcare manufacturing retail supply chain logistics and utilities the seminar series on digital future for business and society emerging perspective on the metaverse will present various perspectives from a number of leading experts to highlight the opportunities and challenges posed by rapid emergence of the metaverse the seminar series will not only offer a timely and thought provoking insight into the metaverse but also its impacts on future of business management and societal factors impacted by growth direction and widespread adoption of this new immersive technology today we have with us an eminent thought leader professor dimitrios bihalis from banmouth university business school uk today he will share his thoughts on the topic and take us to the journey of metaverse and tourism marketing to tell you something about our speaker professor bihalis is director of e tourism lab and deputy director of international center of tourism and hospitality research at banmouth university business school in england he is strategic management and marketing expert expert with specialization in information communication technology application in the tourism travel hospitality and leisure industries he is editor in chief of tourism review and the encyclopedia of tourism management and marketing journals professor bahalis has written and co-edited more than 25 books and 300 scientific article and recognized as highly cited researcher by clarivate analytics that's tremendous sir he is also featured in stanford university's database of the world's top 2% of the scientists with more than 57000 citations and h index of 102 on google scholar you can follow his work at www.bihalis.com a very warm welcome sir so without any further ado i would like to call our speaker of the day professor bihalis to take over and address our audience over to you sir namaste thank you very much for uh this wonderful introduction i wish my mother was still alive to hear all these wonderful things said about the sun today it's 3 years since she died and it's a sad day in a way but um thank you i'm i'm very honored to be with you and um thank you to yogis for organizing this as well and to cbos university and everybody who facilitates that uh look this is a complex issue and especially my area is tourism and 
tourism is much more complex than any other uh, business and management kind of area for a whole range of reasons. So um, what I kind of decided to do today is to take you around uh, several key issues that they see that they're changing the world and see how metaverse is one of the key drivers for the development of tourist marketing in the future. So uh, feel free to interact with us through the chat and hopefully at some stage uh, we're going to look into uh, different questions and we'll have a conversation. I'll try to go quickly so we can have some time at the back. So I'm going to tackle things like business transformation, smart tourism in the AI, robots and metaverse era. And all of those things are very much interrelated. So I'm going to cover several of these things. So in the last a uh, few years, and especially during the COVID period, I spent a lot of time creating the Encyclopedia of Tourism Management and Marketing. That has got uh, 3,528 pages, has got 1,500 authors from around the world, uh, and has got 1,250 entities with more than 2 million words all together. So if anybody would like to know anything about Tourism Management and Marketing, this is the books that you need to be reading. It's going to take you quite a, long, uh, a while. It took me two years to edit all this stuff and bring all this team together. And equally, some of the key issues that we are dealing today is on my latest books on smart cities and tourism and the Seri economy and the tourism industry and also the gamification of tourism. So when we are dealing with tourism in general we see that tourism is a catalyst for uh, uh, achieving the sustainable development goals uh, from the united nations aimed to bring prosperity in different regions now uh, in order to do that you need to have a whole range of different prerequisites uh, and you need to have a very good understanding of what i call the uh, tourism pyramid and the tourism pyramid is really the synthesis of the entire encyclopedia. So on top here, you've got the tourism system that we've been dealing with for many, many years from the tourism generating region, the tourism destination region, and you've got input in terms of resources coming in and you've got output in terms of value for the different stakeholders. And here in the middle, you've got what we call the transit region where you've got transportation, You've got the remediation, distribution, you have got accessibility. And one of the elements is technology, because technology is effectively the bridge of uh, demand customers in destinations where people are going. But in order to manage the system, you need to understand planning, strategy, and development. You need to understand the market forces, and you need to understand the exogenous variables and all of those things that we do not control and they happen, and we're just getting slowly out of COVID. So this is a huge exo exogenous variable. And then you've got the technologies and the infrastructure. So this creates uh, the basic understanding of how tourism works. And the, the area where we'll concentrate today is the technology and the infrastructure that provides the catalyst for the entire tourism system to operate together operate efficiently and operate profitably for uh, all those people who are involved with this. I believe that uh, we need to look in the, into a vision for 2030, and that vision will need uh, uh, to focus on smartness and agility co-creation of knowledge and value for all the stakeholders. I'm really emphasizing the all stakeholders because this is quite complicated uh, in, in, in tourism because where you've got different stakeholders, with very conflicting needs and requirements and views. And we need to look into how we can use a range of different innovations and inspirations uh, that they're coming from technology, but also they're coming through a lot of other things like empathy and community to, to create anthropo anthropocentric and value-focused uh, developments in tourism. So this is the generic strategy where the tourism industry on a global basis is going to. Uh, it's, of course, very similar to what business, where business is going in general. So business is, uh, tourism is part of the, of the more generic kind of business practices, but it's much more complicated than that. In order to start, you need smartness, and smartness takes advantage of interconnectivity and interoperability 
of integrated technologies to re-engineer process and data in order to produce innovative services, products, and procedures towards maximizing value for the stakeholders. You'll see for every slide I give you uh, a reference, because obviously there are awfully a lot of things I'd like to cover, and I wish I had the time, but please uh, read the article, because the article has got all the all the, the the facts and the and all the research that, that is uh, summarized on, on 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 the slide. So this re-engineering of smartness enables uh, shaping of products, actions, processes, and services in real time. Real time is very important in in tourism because unlike any other business, things cannot wait. You cannot wait. You cannot ask customers to wait for three hours before they get on the on the flight because all of the, 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 the entire ecosystem operates very efficiently. And if you break something, the entire ecosystem breaks. Uh, and it's all about optimizing uh, performance and competitiveness for the entire network and the entire value system. So this is about smartness. Uh, it's all about how can you make a place being smart and how can you play, coordinate all the different actors to operate together. So smartness takes advantage of networks that they use interoperability and interconnectivity. It takes advantage of the internet of things and the internet of everything. It takes advantage of sensors. I, I use sensors in a loose kind of way. Anything that's providing information to us is sensors. And beacons is anything that's sending information to us. It's using big data and data analytics, social media, user-generated content, and all the different areas that they are creating, uh, co-creating experiences. In order for this to facilitate and, and to operationalize this, this industry, you need to understand the physical layers and what are the assets and resources that you are using in the development. You have data layers, you've got technical layers, you've got business layers, and you've got experience layers. One is building on top of the other. So if you break this pyramid, um, the whole thing collapses. Now, smartness is not about technology. Smartness is not about technology. Smartness is about bringing a whole range of different stakeholders, including human capital, social capital, innovation, governance, and technology in improving the entire system, the entire um, uh, ecosystem. And then you've got, you've got different areas like leadership, human capital, entrepreneurship, innovation, and social capital <coughs> that they create the pillars of smartness. And then you've got different layers of um, applications that they're emerging. So here you've got the smart city, you've got the six A's of tourism with accessibility, availability, amenities, uh, uh, attractions, activities, all of those things. And then you've got the tourism competitiveness and you've got the tourism experience. So smartness is really about coordinating all of those things at the same time in a way that everybody maximizes the value for the stakeholders. So it takes us input technology, people and leadership. And it's coming in here to bring together economic, technological and social actors to work together in this eco space to develop innovation, which these innovations are supporting the tourism industry to develop products and services and deliver them. Now, when you are looking to different, play, uh, different destinations or, or different places, it's becoming obvious that you've got a range of different uh, actors all operating together. And a lot of these things are triggered by different real-time enablers. Things are triggering a, a, a change in the context, and that context may um, require response in a particular way. So a context may be the weather. It may, be, it may start raining, or it may be snowing, or it may be, um, uh, for some reason, delays in arrivals from uh, uh, on, on airports or whatever. All of those things are triggering a whole range of things, which then they need to bring the different smart systems that they're using leadership, human and social capital, innovation and technology uh, to support how the entire system gets together in a proactive and reactive way and address the challenges 
bear in mind that in tourism, you cannot stop for a minute and think about what you're doing. So if you are manufacturing cars, you can always stop the production for two or three days. You're going to lose some money, but you can actually do that. In tourism, you cannot because people are on the move. People are already flying into different areas or they are at a destination, which by definition is a hostile environment, and they're trying to survive things that they may not be according to plan. So this is a little bit of uh, Tourism 101 for you to kind of understand some of the challenges that we face before going into what they call the future proofing of tourism. And I'm an old guy. I've been working in tourism and technology for 35 years. I designed the first destination management system back in 89. And I've been using technology and strategically for the last 35 years to see how I can improve the competitiveness of the entire system and the experience of, of our customers. But what you see now in the future is that our experience is going to be dramatically different. And it's dramatically different because we have different uh, technologies that are acting as catalysts in the development of those things. So you've got ambient intelligence, you've got smart systems and smart tourism, you've got artificial intelligence and chat GPT that's developing very, very fast. Uh, you've got robots, bots, autonomous vehicles and drones. And then ultimately you've got, you've got something that I call hybrid living where and traveling where metaverse will be one of the most critical aspects of this i will end up with the metaverse because i really want to cover a little bit of those things very quickly to actually provide the background why metaverse is changing so dramatically so all the technologies have been building over the the, the last uh, 50 60 years and i've been part of the technological development since uh, quite early late 70s um, but 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 Metaverse is bringing a range of new services and products and um, activities that we've never seen before. Many of these things are because um, language and image recognition capabilities have improved through AI rapidly in the last four or five years. So we've had a range of different technologies that that, that we're using, but. Once AI becomes much more clever and it's using machine learning to learn so much material, then we are changing the ball game. And that is changing everything that we do in management and marketing. Ambient intelligence introduce smart systems to everyday environments through propelling interconnectivity and interoperability in all systems, vehicles, and devices through the internet of everything. Technical developments that include AI, machine learning, ambient connectivity through wide area networks, whatever these networks are, are creating a new ecosystem that is changing everything we do. And the new ecosystem is putting um, customers and stakeholders right in the middle. It diffuses a lot of different technologies around and it's bringing customer centricity and, and, and portability. So when these customers are traveling between different places, they take with them their personas, they take with them their needs and requirements, they take them all their uh, access to different kinds of uh, services and products to be able to, to address their needs and, and their requirements. When you see what, this, um, what occupies my time in terms of innovation, technological innovation, uh, you see things like robots, and robots are not something that's in the distant future. This is uh, 2018 in Hangzhou in China, where I made a very good friend uh, that was speaking good English and we could, uh, uh, he, kept, he kept coming into the elevator before me uh, and I was always allowed them to go in, right? This is last year in Hong Kong in K11. Um, it was uh, this little rice uh, robot was going around uh, spraying us. Um, but equally, you've got voice-activated robots, and especially in hospitality, and we've done a lot of research in looking into how uh, people are using them at home. He Hello, Alexa, uh, or hi, Google. Uh, and what do they do when they travel, when they go outside their normal environment? And this is the area where 
it is useful between both home and outside environment. But then we were looking to what kind of applications and what kind of formation people need in the different contexts. And this is another robot that is uh, doing a nice tea for you. And if you buy a tea, it does a little dance to make sure that you uh, uh, that you're satisfied with with your tea. So you see robots coming in and we look into the adoption of robots and what actually looking into what, what determines the adoption of robots. And some of the key things is the relative advantage. So this is the utilitarian use that is bringing, but also the leadership in terms of top management support and the competitive pressure. So if my neighbors have got uh, robots, I need to have robots. Increasingly, we'll see robots on everything we do. And these two ladies I met in Hong Kong last year, one was uh, a, a technology expert, the other was a nurse. And we had a full conversation about um, health issues and she could actually understand and, and she was using anthropomorphic uh, features to, to, to have a full conversation. So robots is empowered by artificial intelligence and we've seen a range of different artificial intelligence coming forward. I'm just um, going to focus a little bit on the chat GPT because this is the democratization of, of artificial intelligence. Where in the last three months, everybody is using, is using um, this, this software to access incredible amount of information at uh, a very few, uh, very, very quickly and very efficiently. And this is some of the papers that we uh, wrote with uh, Yogis and, uh, and the colleagues about what are we expecting from this? And this is from my contribution about what ChatGPT is going to be doing for tourism, travel, transport, and hospitality, where we'll see from the customers, it will be providing information in a natural language that will enable them to access and develop itineraries or uh, eliminating choice or developing itineraries that they are up to date and to share content. And then from the supplier point of view, it will, um, uh, it will replace some of the staff by providing concierge services. Uh, it will provide marketing context and pictures and um, all kinds of um, content generation. <clears throat> it will engineer menus and create new recipes. It will provide different facts and it will enable um, uh, the use of resources towards um, populating social media and creating different things. So uh, ChatGPT4 is uh, much more advanced and it's, I, I, I normally give the analogy that this is like children, you know, children that they are learning very quickly and they are moving, moving forward. And uh, the new children, uh, the, the ChatGPT4 understands audio, video, uh, images and text uh, and accumulating a whole range of different information uh, very quickly. Some of you that follow me on LinkedIn or other social media know that last week I was I spent a week uh, working with the Ministry of Tourism in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, helping them develop their digital strategy in the future. And I was showing to them um, some of my research uh, findings that when you're looking to, what can I do as a tourist for four days in in, in Riyadh. And this is the stuff that, that Google was bringing forward. And this is how we got used to uh, finding information in the last 15, 20 years. And then I showed them what ChatGPT was offering to me. Uh, please create an itinerary for four days. And then I said, okay, what about if I'm on a wheelchair user and I'm, is this accessible? Is this itinerary accessible? So ChatGPT, uh, what they did is instantly um, uh, change that to things that they can be uh, accessible. And this is on Bing and the Microsoft uh, 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 robot. And, and uh, uh, it's looking to, uh, I said, okay, give me some key attractions. And then uh, can you eliminate that uh, to historic and cultural attractions? And you can see here, that the machine is prompting you to go to the next stage because it says, okay, if you want that, you probably want to know that as well. So it's directing your learning. 
And then I said, can I have some authentic Saudi food, please, and gastronomy? And it came up with uh, a range of restaurants. And then it says, um, who do you like? I want you to try uh, Kabsa. And he started providing um, recipes on how I can do I can do this kind of things at home. So this is revolutionary and changing dramatically a lot of the things that are happening. Um, and the equivalent thing uh, will be happening on images, and images will be generated very quickly, very efficiently, which can be used for uh, illusionary and immersive experiences and also for creating uh, content uh, in different things. But we have got a lot of really interesting challenges. This is uh, totally fake. Um, it was uh, developed by uh, a newspaper um, to show what would happen if, uh, if Trump was to be arrested. Um, so we are going to go to a situation where real and fake uh, will become um, immersed and wouldn't be able to understand what is real and what is not. If I didn't tell you that this is fake, you could have believed that uh, Donald Trump was running for his life, was arrested and everything else. So we'll kind of go to a constructed reality, which will be a, a, a very big challenge in, in the future. And this is uh, my, fri my friend Lee Mallon, uh, who sat down with his daughter, who is seven years old. And in about a day, probably eight hours, they used Midjourney, ChatGPT, and Canva to conceptualize fi five very unique uh, uh, resorts and to create a 27 pages uh, brochure and to uh, start selling a concept that didn't exist before. So they just created the hotel chain uh, based on their experience and based on what they want to do. So that drives me towards metaverse and what metaverse is and where we are going. And I think metaverse will be revolutionary because we are going to be able to move to very different environments, illusionary and uh, immersive, where we'll be able to experience things that we'll never had the experience, they, they never had the ability to experience before. So with a few haptics and, uh, and a little bit of technology, which will become increasingly available on all kind of, um, for all kinds of budgets, you'll have a situation where people will be able to experience many different things. Like, can I come to Taj Mahal? And can I look into the Taj Mahal without leaving actually from my office in Bournemouth? Now for us, this creates a whole range of new challenges because we need to serve um, uh, tourists and customers on the online and the offline environment. But of course, if people do not arrive to our destination, there is no transaction made and there is no money coming in. So we really need to be very, very clever on how we are developing these things. Um, Metaverse is, uh, is, uh, is, is part of a technological revolution or evolution that we started from web one, web two, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality. And then the next stage was um, immersive reality where you have got um, um, the ability to interact in a digital twin to your real environment or to imagine or you co-create a new environment where you're going to be able to uh, interact. Uh, we use augmented reality, virtual reality and mixed reality, all of those things to actually create photorealistic um, environments and digital twins where people can operate in, in these kind of areas. And then you've got, um, you've got augmented reality and virtual reality uh, uh, supporting uh, things from um, mixed reality and assisted reality and, 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 and virtual reality to actually maximize uh, the ability of imagining what is in the future and you are looking to the technology content and user in order to improve that experience. I'm not sure if I can play this video. Let me see if I can do that. In anything, keep the metaverse from dethroning travel and tourism. Why pay thousands of dollars on high carbon emitting flights 
Why face delays at airports, lose luggage, or get grounded because of pandemics, wars, or even pilot strikes when the metaverse is by far the cheapest, safest, arguably the most entertaining way to travel? With 5G multi-sensory experiences, you can smell fresh brewed coffee in Parisian street cafes, hear the calls of the wild in Amazon jungles, explore Egypt's great pyramids inside and out, bike the Great Wall of China, or simply tour a luxurious hotel room before paying for it. These immersive strategies can all be gamified and personalized. The metaverse has grown wings. The question is, are you on board? Now, can anything keep the metaverse? I have to say a few things. Number one, I don't believe that metaverse is about avatars and avatars running in a digital environment. I think it will be when, in order to be actually utilized, it will be much more immersive and much more realistic. I think it will be like having a class right now and me seeing you in my metaverse environment exactly the same way that like I would have done if I was in India right now with, with the audience in front of you. And I think that is the level of interaction that's going to take us forward. The other thing, I don't believe that metaverse will actually reduce the amount of traveling that people will be doing, but I feel that's going to be exactly the opposite because you'll see, you'll experience it virtually. You will then like to go and do the real thing. So if I can experience uh, Taj Mahal virtually and understand what's the best way, what's the best time, where should I stay, what should I do, then I think that will be used primarily for planning and it will be primarily addressed, uh, addressing the different needs of, of people. So I expect metaverse to be used uh, before traveling for making the right solutions. I would expect augmented reality or some kind of metaverse being used during uh, the visit. So you can have interpretation, you can look into the different things and engage with different players. And then here on the after the experience, I think we'll be collecting a lot of uh, memories and a lot of uh, experiences and we'll kind of trigger nostalgia and we'll be able to uh, relieve some of our big experiences. So this is what we explain in this paper on how uh, this is going to be, uh, uh, Metaverse is going to be used before the physical visit during the physical visit and after the physical visit. And we see different things, different functions happening, but all of these things will be integrated on a holistic experience. It's really critical that the different players, they are creating content and they exchanging content with the different, all the different uh, content generators in order to create holistic experience and in order to develop the library of the different uh, material that we have uh, uh, to be able to, to co-create uh, the entire experience. What you see is that you see an ecosystem that is emerging. So here is the echo, uh, the metaverse co-creation space before the trip, during the trip and after the trip. But then you'll have a range of suppliers, uh, uh, principals and uh, public sector organizations and governments providing information here and, and, and supporting this to develop. But also you'll see a lot of community and peer work in terms of people that you know, travel experts that they've got expertise like influencers or travel agents, uh, other travelers uh, that will be different kinds of market segments and local people, local people in terms of the residents or, or uh, employees in the tourism industry and everything that goes, uh, everything that goes with that. Now, this is Chengdu in China. And they've created a little um, uh, metaverse experience to actually give you the opportunity to look into some of the things that they're doing.
you get the feeling if you've got this immersive kind of experience, you see if the destination is for you or not and what you're going to do with it. I love this slide because it says, don't sit very close to the television, you'll damage your eyes. This is back in the 90s, whoever was, uh, uh, remember the 90s. And in the 2020s, we are getting so much closer to all the technology to make sure that we, we have a real experience. And this is um, one of my favorite destinations in Bali, where if you are playing this video and I give you the you reference here, for another trip. Where are we going? they show you, these guys are going around, they give you a 360 degrees uh, version. Of, no of, of what okay. Bali is Today, about. Show you what a vlog will look like. So they give so you a much more realistic kind of approach to what you would expect you when you are going to Bali, because they are so almost long. exactly what you'll be leaving when you go to the destination. The and then some of the other photorealistic kind of environments is that do you want to have a flight like that? What is the best? Which is the best business class? Is that Emirates, is that Qatar, or is that Saudi, or is that, I don't know, Singapore Airlines? Can I have a look please and see what's happening? Or how can I experience different things? Or how can I participate in a conference in a hybrid way? With some people being in, uh, in, in reality, in location, and some people being far away. Now, a lot of the metaverse developments will not be coming from tourism. They'll be coming from military, they'll be coming from medical kind of sector, where there's so much stuff developing currently. And I think we'll learn from them and we will be able to operate them in different environments. My favorite one is this one in, in Uganda, where uh, they this project is giving to the ladies a VR um, headsets to be able to, to travel them, to transport them to a, a different reality and support their, their development, support what they are doing. So I like to stop here. I, I hope that you had enough stimulation to have the conversation. You have got the Encyclopedia of Tourism Management Marketing. You've got a couple of books that I've developed. And you've got where you can find me if you need me and you, you would like to develop the conversation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was uh, such an insightful session and uh, covered many, many things from evolution to revolution of technology that Metaverse will gonna bring. And uh, one of the question that was coming to my mind, that was, uh, Metaverse, can it lead to, because you mentioned it won't, but still that was running in my mind because many people will not be able to travel due to physical limitation and financial constraints. So could Metaverse lead to decline in tourism because of virtual uh, travel experiences? Uh, what do you think? It's an interesting question that a lot of people are asking me. So if you don't have the money to go to Hawaii or if you are disabled then you cannot actually travel 24 hours, uh, or if for some reason you are looking after your mother or whatever uh, you cannot do, you'll be able to escape uh, and use Metaverse to go to an illusionary and immersive environment and explore some of the things. Having said that, I don't think that people will really replace the real experience for Metaverse experience if they have the choice. So what's going to happen is I think people will be doing both. They'll be using Metaverse to select things and see if this destination is for me, uh, would I be comfortably there? So some of it is risk reduction. Some of it is optimization of utility based on my resources. Should I go to Hawaii or should I go to Bali? What would I like uh, most? I only have two weeks of holiday and $2,000 to, to spend, right? And then when I'm deciding on a destination, should I go to the either Continental or should I go to the Marriott or should I go to the Taz Palace? Uh, and all of these things, we kind of so far, if you see what we're doing, we were going to Google and we're trying to find out from Google what we like most. Now you'll be able to experience that up to a point and actually make a, an informed decision based on this experience. So I don't see less travel, I see more travel because I think a lot of these things will be stimulated in the same way that when you are looking at a film where James Bond is playing or whatever, 
the next things that you would like to go and explore where this happened? Right, that is an interesting answer. So uh, before I take questions from the audience, Professor Yogesh, I'd like to invite you to say a few words about this talk. No, I mean, talk was just as immersive as Metaverse can be. It was very, uh, very interesting. And uh, it was very nice that Professor Gopalis gave the, you know, the other technologies background. I, I, I think those technologies are going to play a role. Be it uh, uh, AI, be uh, other form of AI, or chat GPT, or many, they also will play a role in the Metaverse environment. Uh, for, for optimizing it, for making it more uh, uh, more experiential for uh, people. So that's that's only thing I want to say. Uh, otherwise, I, I learned quite a lot of things here. Uh, I mean, obviously, there are a number of questions, uh, and I want I don't want to take time from there. But I would like to uh, request Professor Bahalis to kind of give a bit of insight to uh, people. They want to um, research in this domain uh, what they should do. And uh, lots of conceptual piece has emerged. And uh, what kind of method theories and things that you think would help uh, researching in this area? Uh, you are on mute, Professor Bhanis. I was on mute, yes, because I didn't want Echo to come back to you. Uh, so basically, what I think is that um, so far, uh, we've written three publications together, and then I've written another three on my own uh, that they are much more focused on tourism and hospitality. So when people are approaching me now and they said, okay, let's write something on metaverse, I said, look, the conceptual thing is more or less done. Uh, and, and I think your leadership has been excellent, and you were very quick on the mark to create the uh, the articles that everybody will be reading and learning because partly uh, a lot of people were saying very um, inaccurate things. I say inaccurate because I don't want to say stupid. Um, so uh, they, a lot of people were kind of thinking of metaverse in, in, a, in, a, in a very strange way. And I think, I think your leadership uh, created uh, the thought the thought leadership and the thought provoking kind of pieces where you got us, you know, 30, 40 people together to think about what is this happening. So this will create the theoretical uh, background and will give us the conceptual background of what's happening. Now, this is done. So the next stage of the research is not to repeat this with different words, but to start doing experiments and to start looking to both from the demand side, so we can get people to look into metaverse environment and test what they feel, what value they create, uh, why they use them, why would they feel that this is going to be useful. And on the other side, we need to do that on the supply side. We really need to work with airlines. We really want to work with, with all kinds of different players to see what can we do with this thing. And one of the very interesting thing, which uh, there, there are a lot of things that, that, that you cannot predict where this thing is going to go. So one of, the, um, one of the things that we do in Bournemouth University is we are now working with the dementia center. Because what's happening is that uh, people who have got dementia, they kind of forget part of their past. And what we would like to look at is if we had... Uh, digital memory, because someone who has traveled, I don't know, to Greece and has taken awfully a lot of video and pictures and everything else, and now they've got all this content available to them, will be able to get them to re-experience that on inversing environment in a way of triggering back their brain. So there are a lot of uh, use cases that will be emerging that we we have no anticipation, we, we don't know them yet. A lot of things are going, a lot of innovations will be emerging because a new technology is coming forward and a lot of new things will be, will be emerging to support, to support that. Um, so back to your question in a very long way is basically 
uh, now that the conceptual work has been done, we really need some more experiments and we really need to get people to try and see what works and what doesn't work. And we need those things very quickly so we can inform um, the developments and we can support um, the, the, the development of realistic things. So you, you, a lot of people are telling me, look what happened with Meta in Facebook and they are putting all this money and they, they, they got no money back and you know everything failed. And I said, look, they were doing the wrong thing. I don't want my, my um, avatar, I don't want to see my avatar going around different places. Okay, that is not, it's, 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 this is gaming and gamification and it's not very clever. What I want is to be able to navigate my way through the, the different kind of areas in, in Delhi or wherever and kind of select what do I like to see. So if, if, if I say I'm, I'm going to be in India for two weeks, right? India is a vast country. Where should I go? What should I do? I know very little about India. I've only been once. But how can I develop my itinerary by looking into different areas and by using AI at the same time to tell me where should I go, knowing what I like and what I don't like? Okay. So if I was to come to India and I see the, uh, some of the uh, beautiful cultural heritage things that you have got, it would be wonderful. If it was to engage with me, uh, uh, engage me with other people that are uh, like-minded so we can have an interesting conversation, I would love that. But if, if I was to, but I would like to avoid some of the uh, poverty that you've got in India. I would like to avoid some of the dangerous areas. I would like to, to avoid some of the places that I, I wouldn't really enjoy. Okay, so it's it's those things, and that's why I brought all the different things together because you'll have AI, you'll have robots and robotics, you'll have metaverse, all of those things co-creating the experience in the future. And the future experience will be very different to the very to the analog experience that we had so for, for so many years, because we had the uh, analog experiences that they were very, they were based on budgets, they were based on brochures that they were developed once, they were not dynamic. So all the information was static, no matter what the weather is like, no matter what the context, the local context is like, no, no matter what the traffic is like, no matter what's happening, the brochure was giving you the same thing, right? So now I'd like to have optimization of time, my time, optimization of my budget, optimization of my experience as a traveler, and equally as a, as a government or as a destination, I would like to, to optimize the resources I'm using, the types of customers I'd like to attract in order to be able to maximize the benefits for all the stakeholders and to ensure sustainability, ensure uh, um, alignment, cultural alignment, you know, I was in Saudi Arabia uh, last week and I was saying to them, look, you don't want all the tourists to, to come to, to Saudi Arabia. You really want the tourists that they can support your society and they've got cultural alignment because otherwise you'll have a lot of problems, a lot of conflicts. And that will, that will be much worse. So um, metaverse in our industry, in tourism industry, I predict that will be a huge tool that was going to uh, enable uh, suppliers and demand, if you like, and destinations to operate themselves in such a clever way that they can, that they can optimize the impacts of what we're doing. Thank you so much, Professor Valis. And uh, I mean, I, I definitely see that, uh, you know, if people want to do research, they can look at how, how metaverse can help in terms of reducing anxiety and increasing the, the experience, positive experience uh, about their journey. So maybe experimental with a technology tools and those kind of things uh, might be uh, wonderful. But I wouldn't take more time from other participants. So I'll let Vinod know, carry on asking questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Yugesh. 
Uh, so uh, allow me to now take questions from the audience. The first question we have from um, Galina from Paris EDC Paris School of Business. The question is uh, concerns that environmental impact concerns. Uh, there is a criticism that the environmental impact uh, that due to tourism industry that it has environmental impacts, right? Could the metaverse be a solution to more friendly uh, to be to the environment? Uh, what do you think about it? I mean, will it reduce environmental impacts? Well, uh, metaverse can actually create a whole range of different solutions to look into what is happening and 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 bring different um, uh, uh, dif different solutions forward. So let's say. Uh, in in the Greek environment, you've got the space, uh, you've got the, a place in, in Zakynthos Island where they've got little turtles, you know, the careta careta little turtles that that they need to, uh, they need to be left alone at a period of time when they are reproducing. So imagine that you are a tourist and you have decided that you're going to go to this place and then, of course, environmentally, uh, uh, environmental management says, okay, we're going to close this area now. You are not going to be able to go and see. It. So when you have situations like that, you, you would have um, the immersive virtual experience replacing the experience on environmental sensitive kind of areas. Equally with archaeological sites, you know, I don't know if anybody has been inside the pyramids. Um, the Egyptian authorities allow about 250 people per day to go into the pyramid. The demand is more than 5,000. But actually, they allow only 250 people to do that because of the constraints of the space. And also, if you, if you allow so many people, the humidity that you allow there, they're going to destroy the, the, the monument. So... Again, you can you can do a lot of these things by replacing the real thing with a virtual thing, or by training people in the virtual thing what to do in the real thing. So um, when you go to places and say do not touch uh, do not touch the nature, you need to explain to people what happens if you touch the nature. And you need to engage with them about training, how they're going to have a better experience. So all of those things are part of environmental uh, impact. But that's, uh, that's a very good question, Galina, and I'll, I'll welcome uh, doing some research with you in actually looking to how you can, you can use metaverse in a clever way to reduce impact. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, next question we have from Mr. Osman. Uh, he's asking how will the met, uh, impact of metaverse on consumer behavior in tourism will be? Uh, what critical models that you recommend to, to be taken into consideration to do future research? Well, consumer behavior is, is, um, can be divided into many different things. So you've got You've got um, um, the measurement of intention and what can uh, what can uh, metaverse do for intention. You have got transaction and what actually triggers the uh, customers to buy something. You have got um, the actual behavior of people in a particular place. And back to back to what uh, Galina was saying earlier on. You know, um, we find that people when they are traveling, they don't want to be environmentally friendly. They would like to waste as much water as they can because they are not at home. Uh, they, they have got awfully a lot of food waste when they're going on a buffet. Why? Because they take, they feel that I've paid for it, so I'm, I'm entitled to have it, right? Um, so a lot of these things will, um, hopefully, Metaverse will enable us to explain to them what's happening because if you see, you know, 25% of the food that's produced in hotels and restaurants being wasted, and especially plated food, um, you, you, can use a, you can use metaverse to actually test and experiment what people will do if they knew the outcome of this. Because you can actually show them what is the outcome of your actions. Now, I'll tell you a good example and a bad example. Some years ago, I was, I was in uh, Portugal. 
and I was on the Aveiro area where I'm visiting professor, and I went to the beach. And the Portuguese were incredibly good uh, keeping the, the beach very clean. And it was so impressive that at five, six o'clock in the evening, when a lot of people have used the beach, they were going away and the beach was cleaner than when people arrived. You go to the south of the country in Algarve, where the international tourists, and then at five or six o'clock in the evening, the beach is so dirty because everybody has dropped the things they're eating, their cokes, their cigarettes or whatever. And of course the local authorities, they look after that and they're cleaning the beach every day and all the rest of it. I'm wondering if someone have actually showed the impact of their uh, actions and their consumer behavior and they had experienced that before and after. And they've also seen how civilized the Portuguese community was when they were going to the beach. Would that trigger uh, a, a, a sense of um, uh, responsibility? And would that, would that people say, okay, if I go there, I'm not going to create any, any rubbish. Or I'll take it back to my hotel because they know how to deal with that. So there are a lot of experiments that we need to do in, in looking to what consumer behavior and which, which area of the consumer behavior before traveling, during traveling, and after they travel. Uh, because again, you know, if I go somewhere and collect all these digital memories and I create the digital twin of my travel, I can then share it on my social media or I can share it with my other friends and that can be the trigger for them to go and go to Taj Mahal and, and go to Mumbai and go into the, and then that may influence what they do when they go there. So guys, it's endless. We've just started. We just, we actually just started. I'm so excited, but I don't have the time to do all of these things. So I think, it's a, I think the opportunity that's emerging here is to have collaboration with different people to actually, um, slice uh, the big uh, uh, the big animal and see how we can cook it. Okay, uh, so we have a couple of more questions. Uh, so what do you think that metaverse could boost tourism and a visit to less known destinations? For example, Serbia. So your yes, opinion... Of course, especially if you are not, if you, if you are not on the news, if you are not, if you are not occupying uh, the social space and the technological space, you can use clever uh, immersive technologies to actually showcase why should I go to Serbia. I know, as a Greek, I know how, why I need, I need to go to Serbia because they're wonderful people, fantastic cuisine, and very nice resources. But I'm not sure if, if, I'm ask, if I was asking in India, would you like to go to Serbia? They'll probably say, Serbia, where is it? What is there? Does it have an Eiffel Tower? Does it have a big bed? Because people, people, especially in the beginning of their travel career, they are collectors of memories and they are collectors of things that they understand that they need to do. Must do list, tick, 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 tick. If you are in a place like Serbia that doesn't have a huge attraction and doesn't have... Um, it doesn't have a, a, a something that's a very recognized. You need to work on on creating that attraction and having uh, immersive environments like metaverse will enable you to actually uh, communicate much better. Why should I? What is the value I'm going to collect in in Serbia? Okay, and I think I think there's huge opportunity for less known destinations to actually use these things to, to be able to, to compete with much better known destinations. Thank you, sir. Uh, the last question that we have is, uh, with due respect, somebody asked that, uh, you mentioned about human and uh, social capital, but uh, you didn't consider structural capital into consideration. So what is your take on that? Look, I, I think we, all of those things need to bring together all the different resources and blend the resources in the most clever way. Obviously, we identify the most, the most critical elements of what we see that they are required in order to develop, to develop these things. But, 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 but everything 
uh, needs to uh, to come together and to be harmonized and to be synchronized in a way that that is 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 creating value for all stakeholders. I think this is my bottom line. Is what do I because I don't care about the use of technology. I really don't. It's not about using technology. It's about the creating value for the different stakeholders who are using technology. And I think the minute we understand this, then we understand who is creating value and how can we bring the different players in there to actually maximize the value created for all the stakeholders. It's always great to go and, and grab something and bring value to me against the value of someone else. And especially in tourism, we see that because you go out and you take um, local resources, and then you take the local resources from the locals and you are using it for your own pleasure. But that's not ethical. That's not going to take us anywhere. Okay. What is ethical is actually using all these te uh, technological tools to co-create value for everybody, to make the pie bigger and to make sure that uh, it's, it's ethically and uh, sustain, uh, ethically distributed the value and it's also sustainable on the, on the longer term. And unless we do this, uh, we cannot go anywhere. So it's all about understanding this very, I, I keep saying to my colleagues, uh, I, I feel very disadvantaged because this, this um, technology keeps moving. I've been working on it for more than 35 years. I, I started with the telex and with the dots. And then I remember receiving my first fax uh, and and I've seen the evolution of uh, digital transformation from that kind of age to where we're going next, which is um, technology will, will create new realities. And that creates a huge range of opportunities, but also incredible, incredible challenges because you wouldn't know what's real and what's constructed, right? And, and, and I think the, the, we really need to bring everybody together and the best brains to look into how can we actually use technology to do good for people, to, good, to do good for societies, to achieve the sustainable development goals, to reduce poverty, to make sure that everybody has got access to different things. Because technology can be very dangerous, can, be, can also actually direct people in situations where um, we, we could distract value. And, and, and and I'm an optimistic person, so I'm an evangelist for technology, but, but, but we really need to look into how can you bring all the different players together and ensure that the technology is going the right way to maximize value for all the stakeholders within the network and the ecosystem. Right. Uh, so everyone, uh, you know, before the question, they appreciate it. And uh, many of the people have uh, thanked you for this wonderful talk. So, any concluding remarks, uh, Professor Vipesh? Uh, I mean, this is simply to say that, uh, I mean, we are at a very kind of different era, at a juncture where things are changing very fast. I don't think we will, we will stop going uh, places, but definitely technologies like Metaverse will augment our experiences, will, will change the way we were, before we were looking at internet, searching about places. Now we will experience places before even we go there. So it will definitely make so much difference. And Professor Bhopal is playing very important role, significant role in terms of making both positives and negatives of these new technologies, uh, you know, visible to people making people aware and also driving research in this area. And we should be very, very grateful to that. Thank you so much, Professor Bialis, for coming to and, and giving this wonderful talk. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So it's time to now uh, thank uh, everyone who was associated with the seminar series. And uh, also, you know, uh, Professor Bialis, so uh, before I do that, you know, uh, there is a link which I'm pasting on the chat, which is for the next seminar series. So those who are interested can uh, 
uh, this is true for the next one also so thank you uh, so much professor dimitrios pialis for taking out your precious time for such an insightful session and very patiently taking all the questions many thanks to professor yogesh kumar devethi dr lodi hughes and professor ramakrishnan ramani for conceiving this idea of seminar series and also for creating such a wonderful platform to discuss this contemporary theme on emerging perspective in the metaverse so i'd like to thank all our guests who have joined from all around the world and very active participation in the asking wonderful questions uh, last but not the least i would like to thank mr rajesh and his team for it support so link for the uh, next seminar series i already said it's pasted on the chat those who are interested can uh, register for the same so before we leave i would like to announce next seminar is scheduled on 26th april 2023 there are three eminent speakers Professor Samuel Fosso Wamba, Toulouse Business School, France. Professor Missel M. Kiros from FGV EAESP, Sao Paulo, Brazil. And Professor Anuragini Sirish from Institute Mines Telecom Business School from France will join us to touch upon a very interesting topic, unlocking the business value of the metaverse in manufacturing and operations management. So request all to mark the date on the calendar toward hassle. So thank you.